So a lot of you are probably used to this camera angle right here. I'm going to show you what my new lens can do. I'm very excited about this. Oops, wrong way. All right. Anyway, I think this is a little too far out. Let's crop it like right there. That way you can see that I have a desk in front of me, but at the same time, nothing is too warped. And especially up top here, you can see where it got super curved when I zoomed all the way out. One of the downsides of this lens, but it is a very nice lens, fairly expensive lens. It's the most expensive lens I've ever bought. So uh, the wide angle shots will definitely come in handy for Computex, which is coming up here in a week. It is hard to believe that we are already coming up on Computex 2019. You guys stay tuned for that coverage. But for now, we've got to talk about a case from NZXT. And it's actually one I've already talked about in a separate video. It's easy to look past certain things, but an Activate Windows watermark? Yeah, not one of those things. Snag a verified OEM Windows 10 key from SCD Key for a little over 10 bucks and enjoy a fully activated OS without the annoying compromises. Use offer code SSTUDIO for an 18% discount on your order. This is the H500, and it shares many similarities with its older brothers, the S340 and S340 Lite, two cases that I thought were excellent and game changers in the sense that they were aesthetically different and functionally different as well from most of the other mid-towers on the market at the time. One of the reasons why I like this case so much is that it is a great value, about 70 bucks for a mid-tower, that's not too bad, whereas you could spend 100, easily 100 bucks, 150 bucks, even $200 in some mid-towers, and they're not gonna provide anything functionally different for the most part, they might look aesthetic aesthetically pleasing to the eye, but I think the H500 looks good too. Some people don't like the boxy, squared off look, but I think this is refreshing in this market. The PCO11 Dynamic from Lee & Lee is probably still my favorite case from a functional perspective in the sense that I think it utilizes space the best of any case on the market to date, but it's 120 bucks. Sometimes it goes down to about $100, but still, 100 bucks versus seven, you could take that 30 to 50 bucks and you know throw it into a better graphics card or a better CPU and actually reap the benefits, uh, right? Get higher frame rates in games, maybe export videos faster, a case for the most part is not going to restrict your frame rate by any significant amount unless it's you know uh, basically a hot box and has no access to air speaking of which that's what I want to focus on again in this video the h500 does not really look like a case that would be favorable for airflow and that's because the entire front panel is sealed off the left side of the front panel is sealed off the top is yeah, sealed off. The bottom, there's a little gap there. And then on the right, we have just a thin little mesh and uh, these holes are not very big. So at first glance, you might think this case is indeed a hot box. So the two hottest components in your system, of course, your graphics card and your CPU, they consume the most power, they you know waste the most energy, and that's why they emit so much heat when they are running either at 50% utilization, 100% utilization, even at two or 3% when they're just idling, they're still going to emit a little bit of heat because power is running through that system and a byproduct of electrical energy when it's actually doing work is heat. And that is something we cannot escape thanks to the laws of thermodynamics. So in this video, we're going to investigate airflow properties of the H500, why it works the way it works. We're going to test different fan locations. We're going to test uh, intake versus exhaust. We're going to basically try to explain why the H500 works the way it does and why it isn't a hot box because most cases we would expect in this config would in fact be hot boxes. So NCXT includes two stock 120 mil fans. They're voltage controlled, no PWM support, so they're pretty cheap. Honestly, not the quietest fans of the bunch, and I would recommend replacing these if you were going for a higher end build that was going to be fairly quiet. Nonetheless, we're going to use the stock fans to run a baseline. NZXT places these two fans in an exhaust config, so we have one up top and one at the rear, both pulling air from the case. Depending on the other components in your system, this would produce a negative pressure environment inside your case, and this would be bad for things like dust buildup over time, unless you have some pretty hefty dust filters to keep that out. Running our synthetic Ida64 load, our CPU reached 80 degrees Celsius in the H500. This is the exact same system we've used in the past to benchmark the P600S from Fantex, the Dark Base 700 from Be Quiet, and the Matrix 70 from Deepcool. So you can see where the H500 falls in line. It is a better case in terms of airflow than the Dark Base 700 and the Matrix 70, and all only slightly hotter than the P600S, which had an incredibly porous front panel thanks to that nylon mesh material. By the way, the front panel off scenario for the H500 is technically the left panel off because you can't remove the front panel. It's actually a part of the chassis. So what I, what I did was remove that left panel and just uh, there's more or less just to check consistency, uh, right? Because if we had like a five or 10 degree CPU temperature delta um, in between all of our front panel off scenarios, like let's say the Dark Base 700 had a 72 
degree um, front panel off temperature and then the uh, Matrix 70 had a 78 degree front panel off scenario. That would be kind of concerning. Uh, well, it would be very concerning because that would tell us that our testing isn't consistent. It would mean that maybe our room is too hot or we have an overclock in one scenario, but we don't in another. And we want everything to be, again, very consistent. We want as few variables in play as possible. Uh, so that's why I show the front panel off temps. And those should be within maybe one degree Celsius of each other because they're, they're literally pulling in air unhindered with that front panel off. Uh, and when I say front panel off, that also includes the uh, dust filter if there is one. So anyway, I say all that to say that I believe these numbers are accurate and I would be confident telling anybody that the H500 was a better case for cooling than the Dark Bay 700 and the Matrix 70. But what happens if we move the stock fan from their exhaust positions to the intake positions up front? That's where the experiment really starts to take hold and become fun because I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know if the temps will increase or decrease. Maybe pulling in air is better than exhausting air in this case. It's not the same for every case. So just because you see it one way here does not mean that every case follows the same, um, I guess, situation. So this is not, you know, is intake better than exhaust? This is not that argument. Just for this case, because every case is different, I want to see if intake is even worth considering in the H500. And I have a feeling it's not. And that's exactly what we see here. Actually, I ran this test before I ran the stock exhaust config. So if you're worried about the CPU being hot because I've been running other benchmarks beforehand, that, that's not how this works. Um, once things equalize, it kind of all resets and the ambient temperature was consistent throughout. I'm not gonna like my power bill at the end of the month, but for science. A three degree increase in CPU temps in the long run makes the H500 a hotter case than the deep cool Matrix 70 and almost as hot as the Be Quiet Dark Base 700, which is pretty difficult to do if I'm being completely honest. Uh, both of these cases have fairly restrictive front panels again, but the, the Dark Base 700 prioritizes silence. So that's kind of a byproduct of that. If you're gonna seal the case off, it's going to run hotter because there are less places for air to be pulled in from the atmosphere. So uh, the NZXT H500 really has none of that going for it. It's not a silent case. So we're, we're hoping for good airflow here. And if you're hoping to pull in a lot of fresh air from an intake config, it's just not gonna happen here unless you pull the air in from the top or the back, which wouldn't be ideal because uh, yeah, you'll be pulling in a bunch of dust and other things that you won't want in there in the long run. So now let's throw the fans back into their original positions where both are exhaust, one up top and one at the rear. Let's put two more fans. Let's say I want to buy premium fans and put those up front. NZXT includes a nice little fan mounting bracket up front, so it would kind of be a shame to let that just sit there unused. You can see in this build here I have two Chromax fans, 140s from Noctua. Uh, in, in that build, that's my streaming PC. And I used two more of those, but they were 120 uh, fans up front in our H500 Overwatch test build. So in this case, there was really no change at all. 80 degrees, 80 degrees. I let this thing run a little longer to see if temps would go up at all. Um, we did 30 degree runs here, but I let this thing run for about 45 minutes and it still didn't go up. 80 degrees was the highest it went. And this is when CPU temps, you know, they, they spike and then they go back down and they spike a little bit and they go back down never spiked above 80 degrees Celsius. And that tells me that one, the fans up front are useless and you're just spending money for no reason. And two, you're gonna make your build louder overall by the inclusion of two more moving parts, two very loud moving parts under certain circumstances. So don't buy extra fans for the H500, keep them in the exhaust config. That's my recommendation. And I know this sounds really weird, but the inclusion of a fan bracket up front is almost pointless, almost, because you could still put an AI up front, but even then I would, <laughs> I would almost recommend in that case, you set those fans to exhaust out the front because you're really not gonna get much air being pulled through that front panel and that side grill. So unless you have an AIO, I would say leave that bracket completely blank. Yeah, it looks a little weird not having anything up there, especially if you have like an Overwatch theme uh, H500 or something of the like where you can see the LED shining through that little uh, bracket there. It just, it doesn't look visually appealing in my opinion but it makes the most sense financially, and that's why I have to advocate it in this video. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a peculiar case of the NZXT H500. Why on earth does it work this way? Why does adding two fans up front really not change anything? And why does moving those two exhaust fans into the intake setup not, you know, help? Why does it make it worse? 
For one, there are more hole punches up top and at the rear than there are up front, which means that there are more spaces effectively for that air to be pulled into the atmosphere by those exhaust fans. If we place them up front in an intake config, there's less space for that air to be pulled in. The second reason why uh, th this is the way it is, is because air has to make a 90 degree turn when it enters the H500, and that is a big no-no when it comes to fluid dynamics and everything else that I can't really remember from engineering school. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna refer to Wikipedia here. So look, in the long run, when you have a huge piping complex, right, because air is a fluid, liquid is a fluid, so we can use them interchangeably, loosely, in this scenario. When you have a huge complex and you have tons of turns, but long lengths of pipe, the pipe itself will create a lot of friction and that will affect the fluid's ability to move through it efficiently. So by the end of that you know, piping complex, the fluid might be exiting a lot slower um, than the fluid might be entering the pipe. So if it's entering at 10 meters per second, it might be exiting at five meters per second, right? Because of that pressure drop due to friction, the pipe creates. Friction is also produced by turns in the pipe. So if the pipe has a bunch of 90 degree fittings and you know that fluid has to turn every which way before it exits, that is also going to slow down the fluid. Think of the H500 like one big 90 degree fitting and think of air like the water in our example. When that air has to turn 90 degrees sharply, be pulled in through the intake fans and finally enter the case, it has lost a lot of that punch that it had when it first got pulled in through those hole punch grills. And because it no longer moves as quickly, the intake fans themselves become inefficient and almost redundant to the point where there's no sense in even placing them up there to begin with because temperatures overall didn't change, which tells us that air being pulled in was nothing really to squawk at. For one, there wasn't much air being pulled in because it was so restrictive front. And for two, the 90 degree turn slows the air by the time it enters the case, which means less of it over time is entering the case and is being pulled in through the front panel, which again means the fans are inefficient and redundant. So don't put them up there. Again, AIO is a different story, but I do want to emphasize that if you just have fans up there like I do, it should only be for looks. And I have like a ton of these Chromax fans. So I just put two up there because I thought it looked cool. Just look a little weird having a blank spot there. I get it, right? I get it. But don't spend 40 or 50 bucks on premium fans, you know, especially if they're like the silent static pressure kind. Like there's, there's no point for the H500. Other cases, yeah, sure. But if you're buying the H500, if you're dead set on that case, there's a good reason why you shouldn't. Actually, there are a few reasons why. The exhaust config is significantly more efficient uh, because those hole punches are right over the fans and there are more of those hole punches in the exhaust places. And also the intake config, while it is restricted from the hole punches, also has to turn 90 degrees and that just, it, it creates too much turbulence, it creates friction, and it, it ultimately reduces that punch that the air has when it finally enters the case and cools your components. If you guys like this one, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. I wanna show you guys this build one more time uh, because I really enjoy building in the H500. And uh, this is like my, f I think my third or fourth build in here. And uh, this is the Overwatch edition. Again, it's, it's more expensive. I think it's like twice as expensive as a stock H500. If you're a huge Overwatch fan, then by all means spend the extra money. But I imagine NZXT expects most of you to buy the stock H500. So that's what I would recommend. And again, it's coming in at a great price. I always enjoy building in this case. And uh, I think this build in particular, again, looks pretty good with the orange accents. This is a, the same build we always use for uh, our case reviews. And we try to keep this as consistent as possible because again you want this consistent runs between cases so we can compare airflow accurately if you guys like this video thumbs up you know what to do click that red subscribe button if you haven't already and become a member if you're feeling especially fancy that would be super awesome this is science studio thanks for watching and thanks for learning with us